Hello and welcome to the Kink Nora podcast. I am Shay Noor. And I'm Brian. And this is episode two. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about how to get in the lifestyle. So let's get started. Yeah. Um, so last week, we kind of talked about how we got into the life, like what events led us there and what we identify as and, and things like that. But uh, we wanted to talk about what happens now, like after you do the research and you decide that you're ready to step into the life and give it a shot. And it can be an overwhelming and isolating at times experience. So the first thing you want to do is find a community, uh, find like-minded people. Um, for me, uh, my favorite resource has been Twitter. Uh, I come across a lot of cool people that are open and honest and always willing to to help. And it's you can remain anonymous, so you can find almost anybody you want, talk about almost anything, and it, it always goes pretty well. Most of the time, I won't say always, <laughs> because yeah. there's weirdos who, you know, are weird. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, the second uh, resource um, that works for me has been FetLife. Um, FetLife is, I guess, uh, an online, uh, community. It's an internet platform where people, kinky people get together and talk to each other. Um, you can find lo local events, you can find like-minded people. However, um, it's a completely different experience for Black women. And I guess if you want to go into that, Shay. I, I, I just want to go through the, um, the ways of going about it first before I even get into the pros and cons <laughs> okay of it um but yeah tw twitter fat life and then other ones oh yeah um this i guess the third thing would be uh going to munches uh munches are get togethers where there's no play usually during the day uh in a public place um just a few people who are like-minded who want to get together and just introduce themselves you can feel people out uh you can uh, create your community and, and strengthen your social network, uh, which ultimately leads to a, a more safe and pleasurable experience. Um, and then last, uh, you can find a local dungeon and they'll have uh, post things, they'll have get togethers and parties and you can just hang out there and meet people for play or just to introduce yourself and get a feel of, of what's going on. However, you know, every dungeon has their own list of rules and boundaries and things like that. So you have to familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with those and go from there. So those yeah. are some places you could. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> it's okay. No, no, go ahead. And I was going to say, yeah, because like um, Twitter is a good spot to like talk to people and, you know, possibly meet people and things like that. Personally, I'm not on Twitter as much anymore, so it's not as uh, useful to me in that area. Yeah, you, uh, you won't tweet, and I can't stop tweeting. Yeah, <laughs> <So>. exactly. <laughs> and then, like, with Fat Life, I don't like Fat Life at all. And this is me, me more so going to the pros and cons of each uh, resource that we use. Uh, and like Brian said, yeah, like, me being a Black sub, a lot of times, I've come across uh, messages from white guys wanting me to top them or dom them. And I'm just like, I don't have time for the bull. <laughs> and then it, it was like a big, and I'm not trying to say all of that life is like that. And I'm, and I know there's great communities in there. And part of it is just probably me being too lazy to search through it. <laughs> but a lot it's, of it. It's so big and it's not streamlined. Like Yeah, exactly. You, you kind of like just, you have to roam around and you're going to mm -hmm. roam around a lot of bull. And I don't want to roam around a lot of bull because a lot of stuff was like a dick measuring contest amongst doms. And it is. So, <laughs> it is. I'll, I'll tell the story a little bit later, but yeah, it is. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It, it was, it was, it's just too much. And for me being, I considering myself being a newbie, it was overwhelming and it just wasn't a very, uh, pleasurable experience for me to learn more about the lifestyle and stuff. I, I learned a lot, but it wasn't enough for me to want to stay there and continue engaging in the community. And then munches, I haven't been to one yet. It's hard for me to find one, 
but like you can if you don't want to engage with the fit life community you can just sign up and then go through yeah. the forms to find events um that'd be like a great way to find events in your area and then dungeons we don't have one here that i'm aware of so <laughs> what what's left <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Um, like for me, um, <clears throat> when I first started out 11 long years ago, um, the internet, um, there wasn't as many resources as there are now. So I spent like a lot of time just like searching through really horribly put together GeoCity sites that, you know, random people threw online, like, you know, with personal stories and some stuff had like lists and, you know, get, to, you know, DIY stuff. But there wasn't a community where I could like talk to people like on a regular basis for emotional support or guidance or or mentorship. So personally, I didn't really grow into it until I started getting on Twitter. And I came across so many really great and nice people um, who are willing to help me and talk to me and, and guide me through things, even just emotional support. And you have no idea like how uh how important just finding one person who likes what you like can be. Like it can open up a whole new world uh, right there in front of you. And so Twitter has been invaluable and it, you can remain anonymous. Um, the people are easy to find and you can find someone into just about anything you want to find. And they're just right there. Uh, FetLife for me, I guess, like we just said, it for doms, um, you know, for subs, it's pretty cool because I think the community is more tight knit and there's a bigger safety net uh, subs. I just, I guess, do that naturally. Uh, they find each other, they get together, they guide each other. They, you know, rely on each other for emotional support. Doms don't do that. Like whenever doms get together, it's immediately a dick measuring contest. Like I'll, I'll tell a story. When I first signed up on FetLife, um, I was going through a particularly bad breakup with our third um, at the time. And I just wanted someone to talk to, like people that would know what I was going through and could, you know, help me through it. And so I found a group for uh, black people in the BDSM. And uh, just to sidetrack for a second, every group on FetLife is run by a member of FetLife. And every group has their own rules and their own uh, regulations and all that stuff. So. I decided to make like an introductory post just saying, hey, my name is Brian. I do this, this, and this, uh, you know, pleasure to meet everybody. And so I put it up and the owner deleted it. And I'm like, what the hell? So I put it up again and then he deleted it again. <laughs> and so then I put it up again and then he deleted it again. And then at this point, it was just like a battle of wills. I was just like, fuck this guy. I'm gonna get a post here no matter what. It was like two o'clock in the morning. I said, I'll stay up until Thursday <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to get this on. And so after like an hour of like going back and forth of me putting up the same introduction and him deleting it, he sends me a message and he's like, you didn't find, you didn't read the, the rules about introductory posts here. I'm like, I did, like I didn't violate any of them. And he said, yes, you did. So you gotta make another one. So I'm like, all right, fine. So I retooled it a little bit. And I put it up and then he deleted it again. And then so at this point, we're like going back and forth with messages. And what it boiled down to is that he was insecure and he was trying to prove that he was more dominant than I am. Because I don't know what was going on in his head. Like, I guess maybe he was older and he wasn't as cool as I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that could have something to do with it. But I wasn't there trying to take anybody. I wasn't there to even meet anyone on a sexual or on a, a play level. I just wanted people to talk to who would understand what I was going through. And so for, for doms, it can be a much bigger project and it can be much, much, much harder to filter through all those things and find someone that's actually going to listen to you and help. Um, sometimes I think submissives have an, an easier time of, of doing that. So um, munches. Um, I've gone to a few, uh, and honestly, both experiences were, were great. Like, it, there was no pressure because it was there was no play. 
And it was just, you know, you have a few drinks, you get to know each other, and then you go home. Like if you, it gives you a good chance to feel out the, the community that you can say like, this group isn't for me. I don't like the feel of it. And you go find another one, you know, another time. Or you can say these people are great. You know, I really want to immerse myself in, in it, get to know these people and possibly find someone to to play or or sing with. Um, it's intimidating sometimes like to be new and suddenly find yourself with veterans and people who've been doing it like their whole lives and are, you know, Shibari masters and, <laughs> and everything else. <laughs> and you don't know anything. But I find for the most part at Munches, it's a very relaxed environment and people are always willing to, to help no matter what level you're, you're, you're in. Yeah. And um, finding Munches can be hard. And like I said, I'm going through Fed Life is one way. A simple Google search is another way. Um, yeah. For me, I, <laughs> I do here. I did a Google search and I came across a website and it was like, or well, not, a, but one of the searches was, uh, black munch or something like it was like exactly what i was looking for and i mm -hmm. go on the website and it was like an old angel fire hosted website and i was like oh lord my computer's yeah. about to explode <laughs> <laughs> it's over my website it wasn't updated <laughs> and it was like oh okay here we go so it's what i'm doing now is i'm going i'm going to go to a restaurant that's very similar to a restaurant that i went to when i used to live in orlando that when I worked at the LDB Center, we used to all go to. And at the center, that's where I found more out about kink and the types of kink and all that jazz, yada, yada, yada. So I'm hoping that <laughs> going to this particular restaurant will produce the same results. I can meet more people who are probably in the lifestyle, if it's similar to how the Orlando setting was. I'm betting my yeah. money it is. So <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I've noticed that... Um people in the lgbt community are usually more welcoming uh than, than people outside of it mm -hmm. and um just to uh we hope in the future uh to go have a show about how the uh, lgbt community is responsible for pretty much starting the modern bdsm right. scene as we as we know it we got to find an expert i don't want to go into it because i don't know much about it and i'd rather have someone who can relate more to it and, and give a better explanation so one day in the future we're gonna give that to you guys but um, but yeah, that's a great idea. Um, finding places with open-minded people, you'll always run into somebody kinky. Yeah, <laughs> because they're they're everywhere. And I say so LGBT, and I say like, as a, I'm not a part of the community, but I that's a whole another story for a, <laughs> that's just a whole another story, another topic, <laughs> and maybe I'll get into it. But um, yeah, so. I'm, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Uh, toes crossed. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully, it produce some fruit. Yeah, I think it will. Like you, you know. Um, well, you know, it's much easier to find like-minded people when you're in an urban area. So if you're in like New York or Chicago or San Francisco or Austin or one of those places like that, mm -hmm. it's real easy. But if you live in a small town, it can be impossible. Yeah. And you could just be like there lonely and you might have to find yourself in a position to having to, you know, drive or maybe even starting the community yourself. That's always an option too. Like you can do it yourself. Um, it's hard and it can be embarrassing. And because it can you be still kind of have to find people to be a part of the you group. Still, so. you, yeah. And then you have to convince people you do find to then come out. Exactly. And, and uh, coming out sometimes can be, it can be hard because people judge you and people don't know what it is and they think you're weird and they think that you abuse people or they think you have like daddy issues or, you know, it's, it's a whole <laughs> big, big ridiculous thing. But um, I guess that kind of leads us to our next topic. Like if you find yourself in a small town or you find yourself in a place where there's no play, you could experience something that we call frenzy. And frenzy is, a state of being where you can't get that itch scratched. Like play and bondage and BDSM consumes every thought you have and everything that you do. And there's kind of no way getting getting out of it. And so when that happens, you find yourself like <laughs> playing with, willing to overlook things 
that you would not normally overlook if you were, you know, in a more uh, regular state of mind. Like you find yourself with people you really fucking hate <laughs> because <laughs> only because they're in life too, and you think you can get something out of it. Um, you know, just in in research and, and reading over the years, um, I only hear about sub frenzy. Um, Dom's experienced Dom frenzy too, uh, which I'll get into in a second. But if you want to tell everyone um, about frenzy from your side and your experience with it and how you get through it, that'd be really cool. Yeah. So it's like he, he said, an intense uh, desire to play, to do everything, to just get involved, to just have that, like you said, that itch uh, scratched. And yeah, I've experienced it. And it is a beast. It is a beast because it's on your mind. It's all that you think about. And you just, you just want it to stop. You just want the thoughts to stop. And there's almost like no way to stop it until you play. Uh, yeah. I've noticed that I have to be careful about what I do, particularly like content wise, like with the podcast. And I, so I end up doing research and I end up doing all types of stuff like that, images and stuff. And I've noticed that sometimes that can cause a frenzy episode to a moment, well, dang, I want to play, but you know, I don't have anyone to play with. And so it gets, <laughs> the feeling gets more and more intense. So me knowing that now I have to cut back on my images just to help myself out. But it ha it happens and I, I can, almost hell when it's about to happen like even when i cut back on the images and all of that stuff it still happens because like i'm not in a relationship or anything it is just me all i really do have is like work and stuff to focus on so when the episode does occur i try to pamper myself i uh, get myself a pedicure it's a great idea. Hair, um do my hair i get like i'm involved in like projects and stuff now but then i get super involved like heavily focused on it just to keep my mind just on anything but friend what's the frenzy thoughts that's going through my head and other times like one time almost recently i had to cry it out i just work wasn't cutting it like pampering myself wasn't cutting it it was just like nothing was cutting it at the time and and at the all i could do was just sit in my bed covers over my face and just cry it was yeah, that frustrating and it passed eventually but was it hell going through it hell yeah <laughs> 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 but it, it passes and that's one thing you have to realize it does pass so like before you catch yourself in an awkward or a situation you normally wouldn't feel too comfortable about like just remind yourself like hey it'll pass just just breathe and just grit your teeth sometimes yeah and just get, and just get through the next few hours or, or the next or the night sometimes. yeah the night like um for me <clears throat> you know doms aren't quite open we're told we have to be in control of ourselves all the time we can't show emotion we have to be cold which is stupid but um we all experience frenzy like anyone who's in in the life like understands that it's not just something you want to do like it's something that you feel like you physically need like to breathe and get through the day sometimes and uh, like you have your triggers and and for me like when i'm really stressed out or i'm having a bad day like it gets really intense for me and sometimes like when yes. you're like when you're like grown like you just don't have time like you yeah. got you got work to do, you got people to take care of, you got places to go, you got to cook, you got, you know, nieces and nephews want to come over and there's just shit to do. And for me, like, I'm busy, like, like I'm busy and I'm not doing anything, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm like the busiest guy ever. And so sometimes I go through like days or even like weeks where there's just no time to, to play. And I find myself like getting really tight and, my like fuse is like really short and I'm just like waiting for someone to say something so I can snap. And sometimes like for, like I talked to my girlfriend about her frenzy and she's like, well, you know, before I met you, I would just go to, 
I would go volunteer. She was like, for me, like, I realized that it didn't have to be physical. Like I had a need to serve. So she said, I would go volunteer. I go to a soup kitchen. I go to the church. I'll like one time uh, she was having it real bad. Her father was throwing a, a festival and she said, I'm just going to go paint kids faces. So she just went and painted kids faces all day. And then she said, just giving, submitting to something, whether it was like a cause or um, an organization, she said it went a long, long way. So that's an, an option too. But for, for Dom's like, there's nothing like I can't go to a soup kitchen and like take over. <laughs> like, tell every start telling the people who work there what to do. Like, <laughs> all right, I'll roll my sleeves up and say, all right, you go do this, you go do that. It doesn't work that way. Like sometimes you're just like shit out of luck. You just gotta grind your teeth and sometimes you punch the wall, sometimes you like <laughs> punch the bed. Uh, sometimes you take long aggressive walks listening to aggressive music until you know, like your legs are tired. But for the most part, there's kind of no way out of it for, for Doms. You just have to get through the night. Yeah. Hours. It's it's hard. Like you like you feel like you're going to die. Like you're like, if I don't do this, I'll like literally like lay here and die. <laughs> it's it's not true, but that's how you feel at at the moment. Right. And the thing about it is it's crazy because a lot now I don't want to say a lot, but I read an article and someone was trying to say you or justify why Dom Frenzy isn't talked about as much. And uh one of the reasons they gave is like, well, they were basically trying to say that was well, not that important because uh Doms don't have as many options as subs. So since they don't have a lot of opportunities to, you know, find somebody to play with or play, then they just have to pretty much just steal with it. And that, well, it, it made absolutely no sense because it, it in a sense they were saying that they do experience frenzy, but it's not important not because they don't have the opportunity to play as much. And I'm just like, well, I don't have the opportunity to play as much. I experience frenzy. And uh, how it was hard for me to understand why one was valued more than the other. Like if if a Dom wrote it, like I can I can tell you why. It's because like we're always supposed to be in control, and frenzy is seen as something that's like a, a lack of control. It's it can be looked at as a negative trait or a negative quality in a Dom. It's bullshit because like all you need is the community. Like all you need is people to relate to, people to talk to, and that can help work through it. But when you're like in frenzy, like it's not just a matter of like getting through the night or the next few hours. You have to get through the next night or the next few hours without doing anything stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you can find yourself like in really dangerous uh, and or harmful situations with people you really, really hate <laughs> because they're the only people there. And that's how people get hurt. It's how people get injured. And you also like, when you're in that kind of mood, you also, you tend to like loosen your boundaries. You're like, well, I wouldn't do this normally, but I see this guy, he's really into this. And so like, I guess I can do it just for a few hours if I get this, this, and this. And then like, once it's over and you kind of have like that itch scratched, like you realize what you did and you can, feel really ashamed. You can feel really grossed out. You can be like, what the hell did I just do? Why did I do it? And then you look at the person and you're like, you why are so gross. Person? Like, why am I here with you? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> but like, you have to acknowledge the the frenzy in yourself so that you can kind of check yourself sometimes. Like, like if you're in a place with no community, you're responsible for yourself. Like you have to check yourself. Mm -hmm. like, and it's not to say that people can't grow to like learn different or learn to uh, experience, have have new experiences i'm not trying to say or we're not trying to say that but it's a lot different wanting to try something new or to loosen your boundaries when you're not in a frenzy state than when you are in a frenzy yeah. state because most likely when you're in the frenzy state afterwards like ryan said you're gonna end up feeling like why the heck did i do that like with this person you feel kind of gross about it 
yeah. or uncomfortable about what just happened as opposed to when you're not in that state it's you're more likely to have gone in with a clear head yeah and then made an educated uh decision to to do or to not do something exactly like, like you can sit and look at the facts you can talk about your part talk to your partner with uh, about boundaries and about limits and hard limits versus soft limits and you can you know but when you're in a frenzy state like sometimes those things don't matter like you just go into it like you dive into it head first like i'll give um an example like a few years ago um me and my girlfriend were looking for a third and we met this girl and we were so we, were, we felt like we needed a third and we were so excited about like the possibility that we overlooked like a lot of a lot of red flags like we have like <laughs> like glaring personality differences like if we were able to look at this objectively like we would have seen like she has no place here <laughs> because it won't work like our personalities are just way too different but we were so excited and frenzied and, and excited about playing like that we dove head first and on her part too like she was excited and and also maybe in a frenzy state and we all just like dove in without having all the facts about each other and it ended up really really bad and everyone ended up being like crushed and hurt and destroyed in the end and just that like few months of you know one night of a bad decision like can lead to months of bad feelings and recovery or or therapy or loss of faith or whatever and so you really have to be very 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 careful when you're in that state about who you play with and who you decide to even talk to <laughs> like and like it's for also me important to like if you see somebody in a frenzy like you think are in a frenzy state to bring it up and to say Definitely. hey slow down back up or something like that because you don't want them to make a decision that they will exactly. probably feel icky about in the long run. And that kind of goes back to what we first talked about, about building a community and building a safety net, because those people can sometimes prevent you from making really bad decisions. They can, like, because sometimes, like, you don't realize when you're in a frenzy state, like, it kind of feels just like being excited. Like, you're just like, oh, someone to play with. You're just not thinking about this actual person. You're thinking about the activity that you, you can do with the person. And for me, like I need to make like an emotional uh, or a spiritual connection with the person I'm, I'm playing with. Like I don't go play with random people. So when I'm in a frenzied state, like I'll tend to overlook those things or I'll like invent like personality traits in the other person that don't exist. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, because, oh boy, like, did you just? Whoo, I think that could apply in and out of BDSM. Ooh, it can. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, did it you can apply to any relationship. Like, I'll be like, and this person will show like no signs of of these traits or these qualities, and I'll just place it on them, and then when it explodes, like I don't have anyone to blame but myself because this person is like, I never said that. I never. Yep. <laughs> Like, I don't like doing that. Like, why would you think that I would do that? And, and, and like, then you realize, like, oh, I was, like, in a really, you know, a really messed up place. And I placed these things on you that, that weren't there. And then in that case, you have no one to blame but yourself. But having a community or a solid foundation of people you can trust who can pull you aside and be like, this guy is an asshole. <laughs> or this this girl like doesn't fit well with you at all like you need to slow down and really look at what you're doing and that can really go a long 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 way and prevent everybody from being hurt not just like emotionally but like physically because i i, I do notice like when i'm really frustrated or if i'm in a frenzy state like sometimes like we said before like boundaries get uh get blurred and so, thank you. I can overlook things and forget what I've, forget things that are really normally very important to me. Mm -hmm. So 
you just have to be really, really, really careful. And the whole thing about telling your friends and stuff, the thing about being a friend to say is that if you're anything like me, uh, you probably won't tell your friends. <laughs> Because <laughs> you already, because you already have a feeling, you already know, okay, like this, this is like this messed up, or just like isn't nothing I would normally do. This is like ew, really iffy, and you yeah. probably won't tell your friends till after the fact. Yeah. So when you find yourself in that position, you might want to just sit down with yourself, do some reflection, and figure yeah. out if you're in a frenzy state or not, or if you're. If you're really going through what you're going through with a clear mind. Yeah, like I, I make it a, a personal rule, like to wait a certain amount of time before I play or get involved with anybody. And that can really help. Like I'm like really firm about not getting into things with people immediately. And like I noticed that, you know, after a couple of days or after that I'm done with the frenzy, like I kind of wake up and I, I can see people for what they are and not what I want them to be. And that really helps me not make more stupid decisions <laughs> where like I end up hurt or I end up hurting someone else because like the person that you're with also gets hurt. Like, because you're not what they wanted either. Like uh, it goes both ways. Like sometimes you turn yourself into who you think the other person wants and that's how you end up doing things you don't want to do or doing things that you wouldn't normally do. And so you really have to be careful. And like you said, do some serious self-reflection and say like, is this someone is first, like, are they a good person? <laughs> like that's a, that's a big rule for me. Like I sit and say, is this person a decent person? And I always want to find that out first before I take the next step. So, and that you have to get to know someone before you know that sometimes. And even if you don't care about all that right there, them being a good person or not, you what your boundaries are. Yeah. I think that's like the biggest thing figuring out what your boundaries are and being and being comfortable enough for you to to share your boundaries and then state your boundaries when you need to yeah like like i, I kind of brushed on uh earlier like when you're in a frenzied state like you will do like anything yes like things that you would never ever do before like you will cross like hard limits and hard limits are hard limits for a reason like once you realize what you're doing or what you did, there will be like consequences, like emotional or sometimes physical consequences that you were not prepared for because you're not in your state of mind. And then like the drop after is much harder and much worse. So, and if you don't have anyone there to provide the necessary aftercare, then that's a whole, that drop can last a lot longer. Yeah, like I've seen it. I've seen like I've seen like people have bad drop after and it's been so bad they just leave the lifestyle like completely. And it, it it's sad when that happens because, you know, BDSM is something that can be really fulfilling like on an emotional and spiritual level. Like you feel like it can complete you and make you a whole person. And so like when you lose that, like I look at it and I see like man, this person is losing a part of themselves like they'll they'll never be fully happy living without it but the possibility of going through what they went through before is, is too big and they can't do it so I, I i understand so like aftercare we could probably do like eight shows just just, yes. just on aftercare which we definitely we definitely definitely will do a show about that because i but, know that when i talk to somebody or when i speak with somebody new i'm like look i'm fairly new to this so i'm gonna tell you right now i don't know i'm not i couldn't tell you what my reaction would be afterwards i could be okay fine i might need minimum aftercare or i might just come out on a bag and flame out on you i don't know <laughs> so and i say that as to give them a chance to say okay well you know what back off or you know what i'm i will be willing to provide the care that you need afterwards we will figure this out you know give them a chance yeah yeah, like for me, like I, I don't mind like new subs because I like to teach. Like that's a big thing of, of mine. Like I, I love teaching and I love nurturing. So like the idea of introducing someone else to things is, is really attractive to me. Um, but like when I'm frenzied, 
like I want to teach people that I hate <laughs> 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 lots, of, lots of things because I just I just feel like I need to do it mm-hmm. and so like again you just got to be always aware of what you're thinking and what, what you're going through like um I'm from Kansas City and I don't go back as much as I should but I went back to Kansas City and it was just it's always stressful like I love my family but sometimes they make me crazy but um it was stressful and I was there for like eight days I normally do like four (laughs) but like I was there and then like first I was okay like you know my girlfriend didn't come with me so the first couple of days like I was fine like I was going great I was like oh man this is so much fun I'm seeing all my friends and my family and I'm hanging out but then I had to go do something really stressful I had to go see my dad and me and my father don't hate each other we just don't get along like we don't have anything to talk about and just like seeing him like triggered a lot of anger in me and then I noticed I didn't have a constructive way to release that anger like I just had to sit with it. And when my girlfriend is around, she'll usually take that from me. Like she is willing to let me spank her or hurt her or, and just like relieve my frustration. Like she's a very, she's amazing. She's strong and, and brilliant and everything, but she's always there for me when I need it. And then I looked around and there was nobody. Like I was just like sitting in my grandmother's room in a room in my grandma's house rather. And angry and frustrated and with nothing to do and so i just like stared at the wall intensely <laughs> for all night like i was sitting there like wilson fisk <laughs> and Daredevil, staring at the wall trying to think of everything that i am and everything that i would be but it was hard like i had to i didn't know anybody i didn't know the scene in kansas city and i noticed that like I was willing to be with anybody at that point. And like the first person that would have walked in and said they were willing, I would have done it. Like despite who that person was or despite what they were about, despite their limits and my limits, I was like, it's getting done. (laughs) So like you gotta be careful and recognize when you're going through those things. And so now like when I'm, if I know I'm going into a stressful situation, like I make sure that I have an outlet everywhere I go <laughs> just just so I can get through tough situations like it can be really hard like it like I said before it, it feels like you're going to die sometimes like it feels like you can't make it you can't get through the next few hours and so it's really hard and it's like it's nothing to joke about sometimes we like laugh about it on Twitter and we joke about it like yeah I talk about it a lot like, on Twitter, it. yeah this like, shit is serious it is it's very serious because you really end up hurt like and you end up doing like really crazy stupid shit Mm -hmm. like and it's like you're you're stressed out and that's another stress on top of the stress you're already experiencing and depending on like what type of stress if it's work related then it's like okay well i gotta go back to work again and deal with this bull all over again come back home deal with frenzy all over again and yeah it can be like one giant circle that seemed like it never ends yeah, like for me, like since I'm a dom, I'm, I feel like I'm supposed to be in control all the time. And so like when I'm going through frenzy, it feels like a loss of control. And so then I get ashamed. I'm like, this isn't me. I'm not supposed to do this. I'm supposed to be in control. Like I, I don't let my feelings take over and control what I do. I make sure everything is always logical and I make the right decision all the time. And so like it leads to other thoughts like it starts off as frenzy and then it can like spiral into depression <laughs> and and spiral into like intense self-loathing and all these crazy things but if you're aware of yourself and you're aware of your triggers and you're aware of the your surroundings like you can put a stop to it you can say like i'm i can feel this coming on i need to go find something to do and, and honestly i hate the idea of frenzy being looked at as something that's as like a loss of control. I hate that. Like the loss of control is yeah. if you, you know, jump into something that you know you wouldn't to just to satisfy that craving, exactly. you know, but having like experiencing frenzy isn't necessarily a loss of control, you know. It's, it's not. 
acknowledging that you experiencing frenzy and then going through the necessary measures to overcome frenzy that are within your boundaries and within your comfort zone uh, that shows huge restraint in my opinion it does and it takes a really strong person to get through those moments unscathed and without making you know a rash decision. uh, decisions <laughs> yeah because like like we just said, like you really want to. <laughs> like you'll be looking out the window, like you're like first person I see, I'm approaching. <laughs> and it, doesn't, it doesn't it doesn't work that way. You gotta you gotta calm down. Like I like I know like for me, like if I feel it coming on, I'll just go find like I'll go look at fights, like I'll go look at MMA fights and I'll like live vicariously through them and that can kinda help. I'll go listen to death metal. Like it's aggressive and it's loud and I can like get whatever frustration is out through that sometimes sometimes none of those things work and the things that you usually do don't help and so you just gotta lay there and stare at the wall for a few hours <laughs> until yeah. or until it passes or cry like you know Dom, cry we, 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 yeah or a professional service that is an excellent point and i don't know why i didn't think of it because i know so many professionals like if you have the right money, like no matter what your <laughs> your fetish or your preference is, someone somewhere will do it for the right for the right amount. Yes. And it yeah. will be discreet and it will be good and the person will be welcoming and kind and polite and not shame you and the boundaries will be clearly set. Like you'll have a conversation, you'll still say, I'll provide these things for you, but then don't call me. Or like even further, like when you're in a friendly state, like you can tell, you can find someone and be like, okay, I want these things, but I don't want to talk to you after. <laughs> so, yeah, or it could like, be a regular person that, you yeah. know, you can communicate, set the boundaries with, and like, hey, it's only this, that, and other, and then keep going about your day. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, shout out to all the professionals out there. Like they help the world go around <laughs> for, yeah, and, for a lot of people. Right. <laughs> I if I had the money, trust and believe, I will hop on it in a minute because I'm pretty sure those those coins that I spend will just it'll just be amazing just to get rid of that doggone itch from time to time. The coins will be well worth it. It will. And like to like dispel like a a, a myth, like the only where there are working people they're not just dominatrices. Like you can find paid submissives if you look hard enough and you look in the right places. So if you have the money, you got a lot of money laying around and you're in a frenzy and you need it and you feel like you're going to do something crazy, see if you can find some uh, a professional. It's a good idea. Yes. It's a great idea. Thank you for bringing that up. I didn't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I have a question that I want to go ahead and lob out to y'all out there. Since we're talking about frenzy and stuff and y'all can leave a comment in the YouTube video comment section or you can leave a comment on our website um, where the audio version will be posted. But um, do you experience frenzy? And if you do, how do you deal with frenzy? Um, do you think there is a difference between Dom and sub frenzy? Is there a reason, like, do you feel like there's a legit reason why uh, sub frenzy is more so talked about than Dom. Go ahead and leave that in the comment section. I'd love to hear your opinion. Yeah, please do. Like we always want to keep the conversations going, like even outside the podcast. Like we want to, we want to grow our community and give people someone to rely on and someone to listen to and someone to relate to. So keep the conversation going, like as long as possible. Ask questions. Like I'm here. For any question that you want, you guys might have, you can email us, you can tweet me, you can do a hashtag. singing telegram. Yeah, <laughs> hashtag it. Kink Nor. I'm like, how are you going to skip <laughs> over that? You can do hashtag yes, right. Kink Nor. Hashtag, yes, we're always looking at, the, looking at the hashtag. So hashtag it and someone, someone will help. So that concludes this episode of our Kink Nor podcast. Uh, you can find us on our website, Kink, K I nk nor noir.com. You can find us on Twitter at kinknoir.com. 
Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Shay, S-H-E-A underscore Nora, N-O-I-R. And then you can find Brian at... At Professor B. Love or through email or looking at the hashtag. Like, I'm, I'm an easy guy to find. Like I said earlier, I don't stop tweeting. Like, I'll tweet... I will, like, tweet through funerals and <laughs> weddings oh <my> gosh. <laughs> or, like, whatever. Like, I'm always, always there tweeting about everything. So find me, reach out to me, um, keep the conversation going. Um, and, yeah, I look forward to it. Like, I, I enjoy helping and I, I enjoy talking about this. So look me up. Yeah, yeah. and there. if you want to submit a question, a topic, or if you want to submit – um, a blog post and, or you have an article yes. idea or something like that, you can email us at kinknorpod at gmail.com. Absolutely. That would be great. Like anybody who's interested, let us know and we'll try our hardest to, to help and to get it up. So thank you very much for listening and we hope to see you guys again in a couple of weeks. Have a great night.